Hey, what's up you guys? All right, so today we're gonna to be going over a, um, the storage compartment for the CD changer. And as you can tell, I removed it completely from my vehicle. Now, the reason why it is out is because I am replacing the stock um, NTG1 factory navigation radio. And in conjunction, it works with this CD changer that's inside this compartment. And I'm pretty sure those that are familiar with it, this little button right here is pressed and this fascia pops out and goes up and then it exposes the CD changer in, uh, insert. So you can insert your CDs. Well, since this system is run through uh, optic system and is through canvas for this switch right here, once you take out the factory radio, this is no longer uh, usable for the most part. So I did a little bit of research talked with a few people that have already done this and they shared with me exactly what I need. Well, this is one of the options and the one that I chose. So there's many options that you can do as far as uh, this mod to get this to work still, even after you swap out the main radio and take out the CD, uh, CD exchanger. You, uh, this is one of the options you can choose and go ahead and uh, do so. Uh, so with that being said, I am going to show you guys how to do it, how to install it using this relay set up with remotes. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys to, uh, if you guys want this, uh, I do, cause I would like to make use of this storage compartment is be able to open this door via remote. So let's get to it. Now, this can be purchased on Amazon, which I went ahead and did. Obviously, this uh, part will be in the description down below. Although, also with some other tools that you can use to get this done and use in future projects. But this is pretty much what it is. And all it is is just pretty much a remote control switch. Uh, it can be used for a variety of different uh, um, applications. And obviously, we're going to be using it to access uh, power uh, pulse through for the motor for this uh, lift gate right here. So this is the box that comes in. This is the actual unit that we'll be working with. Here are the remotes. Obviously I took one of the coverings off this remote so you can go ahead and see it from right here. Pretty good remote. It's made out of, of, of a metal. It's aluminum all the way through. Yeah, there's some plastic inserts on the side and a hard metal uh, ring around this remote. So this is actually a pretty good quality remote. It doesn't seem cheap. It feels pretty good. The buttons are aluminum as well. So, and so everything is actually, is actually pretty good for you. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be carrying with me and a spare, obviously. So let's move this to the side. And this is obviously the, the controller. So obviously splitting it apart, here is your relays in general. Now it's a pretty simple system. Uh, pretty much the way how it's stated through the manufacturer and it does come with instructions, a variety of instructions from all kinds of uh, languages, but obviously we're just going to stick with English. So pretty much the, it gives you pretty much all the instructions as far as wiring up for different applications, whether it's through lighting for motors, uh, different uses, different uh, modes, how to switch the modes and access it. So it can be used for a variety of other things. Ah, look, there's that little plastic cover. Must have not threw it away. But either way, the diagrams are all here. So this makes it very, very easy for you to do and to follow through. And obviously I'm just gonna show you visually because sometimes everyone likes a visual uh, video on this. So it's pretty simple. Here are your inlets for your power, your power and ground. There's positive and negative right there. And I'm not sure if you can see it. Hopefully you can see it and N plus and minus. So, so those are your power inputs right there. This is pretty much what would power the unit in general and over here are your inputs and this is what are going to be hooking up to the motor and it's a very uh, distinct way of putting it it's on the actual uh, instructions for a motor sequence and this is pretty much what I'm going to use and the way how it accesses it obviously you have to press A and then B to open and then B and then A to close so kind of like a combination type of deal it's just one two open one two backwards to close it so you're just sending signal. Now there's uh, different ways you can uh, set it up as far as uh, how, you, how you want it to, uh, to run. Uh, for example, you can just press A to open and B to close. 
I'm doing it this way. Uh, feel free to, to experiment with this. It's not complicated. It's very easy to do. I'm just going to do it this way because I do like that button sequence. And of course, I'm complicated. Uh, <laughs> so either way, this is what we're going to be using. This is the unit itself. Now, obviously, I removed a couple of things here. Pretty much are the controls here for the front of uh, my fascia plate here for your heating controls, the locks and unlock and uh, your hazards is all here on these beige uh, connectors. We're not going to be touching this. We're going to be accessing this motor right here. And obviously there is a positive and ground. The positive being a, a yellow and black wire and the ground being this brown, uh, milkyish red color. Um, so that's pretty much all we're going to be accessing for this motor. Everything else is irrelevant. Pretty simple. Now, like I mentioned before, uh, this switch, it would be nice to, to use this to open it and close, but this is through canvas. And once you take apart the factory radio and all the optics, the fiber optic system, that's all wired through this, there's like a, it's like multiple stages and it's all in series. So if you take one out, you're going to have a hole. If you take another out, you're just going to have to try to fill in those gaps. And I'm not going to do that uh, since that radio is going to be, well, that radio is already gone and I already have a replacement for it. So with this, I won't be able to use. So first step is accessing this harness. Now you can do it a lot of ways. You can do it the very quick and easy way by just cutting and extending wires to your new relay circuit over here. I don't want to do that. I want to kind of keep it original in a sense and I want to use the actual harness. So we're going to come back here. Now, granted, I already took this apart. So it's hooked up back over here. You're going to see the harness plug visual right here. You just use this to put, pop it out of place and it should be able to come out all together. I already disconnected it, as you can tell. And I already took out pins. So let's just take this out. So typically these pins obviously wouldn't be out like this. They would be inside this harness connector and they'd be plugged in and it would be mounted in this location. So we're going to go ahead and remove these pins here, which is going to be obviously this lighter brown wire and this yellow and black striped wire. I'm not too sure if you can see it, uh, but that's pretty much what we're going to be uh, using. This is your power and ground for the motor right here. So with that being said, I'm just going to unravel this real quick and we're going to go ahead and put this back and we're going to use this. So we're going to put all this wiring back, connect the, this harness and just tuck it back where it's supposed to go. Everything else up here is going to be in use. So this is awesome because we could actually use these pins to connect into this sequence over here at this part where the relays are at. And to take the pins out, it's pretty simple, just to show you real quick. There's a cover here, which I think I have misplaced it, but you know, there's a cover you have to pop off. Once you take off the cover, you're gonna see four pins. Obviously there's two out, cause they're already out, but it's pretty simple. Using a pick, the first hole, you're gonna push down. When you push down, you can pop it out and it's gonna get stuck on this second part over here. You push it again down, as far as the, uh, the little tension clip on the pin, and you should be able to pop it out pretty easy. And they go pretty much back in the same way. So we're just going to use these two right here. So with that being said, to hook this up, it is pretty simple. Like I said before, here is our power source that we're going to use. And I already made a harness for this. So obviously this right here, this yellow and brown wire is going to go to a 12 volt source, which will be the cigarette lighter. Obviously it doesn't have to be this long, but I, I like to just have a little extra just so I can uh, route the wires accordingly and nothing strained or tension or has any tension. So I always gave, my, I gave myself a little bit of slack here. And here's the top end. Obviously we're going to have uh, my power and my ground, as you can see, I labeled them here and the hook in to the side over here. And then obviously these are the wires that are going to come from power and ground as well. And they're going to run 
in, in a certain uh, setup here as far as how I have it set up. So um, let's go ahead and do that. Now, the way the diagram, uh, well, at least it shows here for a motor um, sequence, it is set up this way. Let me go ahead and just show you real quick. To find the directions, I hear this. So this is the sequence in general. So obviously, like I said before, your power and ground here, and then you're gonna have the wire also run from here to these two points here on the circuit and the ground is going to run on the outer part of these circuit connectors here and you can tell the motor which is going to be the motor for this uh, actuator here is going to be here in the middle for positive and negative so we're going to go ahead and do that real quick now i went ahead and just uh connected this really quick for you so I can just show you so obviously you got your power and negative and I'll remember the white wires are going to be your power so on the first right outer circuit on this side it's power on the left side of this three prong circuit here would be negative in the middle between the two that's what you're going to put your power in between same thing for this one just repeat over. So your power is going to go on the right side over here. Just going to plug this in real quick. And we'll just tighten it up. Just so I can demonstrate. These wires are giving me OCD because I, I don't find this good yet. <laughs> but let's this is just for demonstration purposes. All right, and there you go. We have that done. Pretty much just like the wire diagram here on this paper, as long as I don't get a glare, that's what I'm trying not to do. Pretty much the same as what I'm doing here. Here's my 12 volt source. We're gonna go ahead and test it. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this right over. So you're gonna notice once I give this power, that control switch over here is gonna turn on and there's the green light. And there you go. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our control. Okay, ready? There you go. And to close it, B, to open it. And the reason why I chose this method or this way is there's a sequence. So just in case this is open, I don't accidentally open it. Or when someone's fiddling the remote, you know, they're just gonna, they're gonna have to do it a certain sequence just to open and to close it. So to close it, it's gonna be B, A, to open A, B. And you can see how fast it moves. I know with a six CD changer, that thing weighs like at least four pounds. I would like to say five, but I'm probably pushing it. Um, but with it out, it's just, uh, it's, it's a lot quicker and it's a lot, it's less strain on the actual motor itself. And that's pretty much it. This is what I chose to do. And it's a pretty simple thing to do again. This will be your power and ground from your cigarette output and everything else. Just mount this on the bottom base of this CD, uh, this, uh, this casing right here. That's pretty much what, uh... so pretty much I would like to thank Devin from Zotic Solutions for pretty much uh, showing this. Uh, he posted this on the AMG page 
that I'm on. So I was able to find this, pretty much gave me the link to this, uh, this uh, switch, and pretty much just showed pretty much what it takes just to install it, which is pretty much nothing. It's, it's pretty simple. Mostly any of you that are watching this can do this. If you know how to put some wires together, a couple of cutting, crimping, and done. And it, you don't really need that much tools. Again, this control switch, if you want to do this, will be in the description below, followed with some tools you can use to get this job done. Also, Devin, uh, his actual Instagram link from Exotic Solutions will be in the description below so you can check him out. His uh, Exotic Solutions is a pretty much a 12 volt supplier. In other words, they sell anything from car audio, electronics, to um, any of the 12 volt, 12 volt goodies you want to put into your vehicle, that's the man you want to go to. Or if you want to just hit him up, you can ask him some questions and maybe he can also help you out as far as running a full amp system, the proper speakers and what you may go into uh, when you're uh, working on your W211 or any Mercedes platform for the matter. Uh, Devin could help you out with that, no problem. Again, this is Panzer. Uh, you guys uh, have a good one. And remember, research, wrench and persevere and you can get it done. Plain and simple. You guys take it easy.